Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So guys, before moving on to the first question, let me inform you that you can download the PDF of this session via the Telegram channel of ours. The link of the channel is in the description below. So the first question that we have is what is the GDP forecast for 2022 to 2023 for India as per the world economic situation and prospects 2022 report. So guys here the right answer is option A 6.7% is the GDP forecast. Now this report is relate, uh, released by UN's Department of Economic and Social Affairs in collaboration with other agencies of the United Nations only but primar primarily this organization is the is the principal organization that uh, releases this world economic situation and prospects 2022 report that tells the GDP forecast for the world and for India. Obviously, other countries are also included, but for us, the world and India, and uh, if you want to broaden your prospect perspective then you can also cover South Asia's as well. So let's see what kind of GDP forecast have been given by this report. So for the world the 2022 uh, contraction was minus 3.4%. 2021 <coughs> uh, forecast is 5.5%. 2022 forecast is 4% and 2023 forecast is 3.5%. Now guys do remember that these are the financial years. 2023 refers to 2023 to 2024. So uh, similarly you can yourself assess which financial year is this 2022 to 2023. Now here you can clearly see that after uh, seeing a downfall in the GDP growth rate, the world is going to increase to 5.5% in 2021 to 2022. And after this year, the years which are following, the GDP growth rate is going to fall. Okay. So in the two consecutive years, uh, the GDP for the world will be falling. Now, what would be the scenario for India? So, India has seen a 7.1% contraction according to this report, whereas the NSO of India has forecasted or has, uh, has basically estimated the contraction at 7.3% in 2020. Uh, the 2020 to 2021 so nso wala is the most important this one is also important and uh, let me also give you clarity here that on the basis of nso's forecast only many international agencies like imf also has forecasted or estimated now it would be an estimate so has estimated india's contraction in the year 2020 to 2021 at 7.3 percent okay now 2021 to 2022 9% is the growth rate in next year 6.7% and in the year ahead uh, that is FY24 the growth rate would be 6.1%. So again you can clearly see that after having a downfall in the GDP growth rate the GDP is spikingly increasing to 9% then it is going to fall to 6.7% and it will further fall to 6.1 percent so what is the reason behind this fall and what is the reason behind this sudden spike in the gdp growth rate so here you need to understand that after the after facing the lockdown for an entire year the people who were not doing any economic activity they have now started doing the economic activity therefore one reason is that the economic activity has started the production has started therefore the gdp production the output production in 2021 was actually there and it has risen. Second reason for this increasing trend in 2021 and 2022 is that we are comparing this year's growth to a uh, year's growth which has seen a negative trend. So obviously this year is going to see a greater recovery. Okay, It is going to give us a picture that would show a greater recovery. However, in actuality, this increased 9% is a result of the uh, of uh, the 2022 2020s contraction. Okay, because we are comparing this year's production with the last year production, and the last year's production is in itself in the negative terms. Therefore, this year's production would appear uh, greater in comparison to the last year's. The third major reason for the spike in the uh, GDPs for this year for India as well as for the world also. I'm talking about uh, both the scenarios, okay? So the third reason for the increment in the world and the India's GDP is, GDP estimate is the increased 
consumer spending as well as investment okay obviously when the people were not uh, were in the lockdowns they were at their homes they were not spending their money all the money was saved they must have aspirations to spend the money i'm just giving you a very micro scale example uh, the people must have aspirations to go to travel to travel to a certain place to a certain country this will definitely give a boost to the economy of that place and similarly this increased consumer spending and investments by the investors has led to an increment in the production or output of the 2021 so these are some of the reasons which have shown uh, which have given us a really positive image for the 2021 to 2022 years now what are the reasons for the gdp's falling beyond this years okay that is in the years coming ahead why is the gdp falling the first reason of this is that now we are comparing the 2022's growth with the growth of the previous year and here you can clearly see the growth rate is much higher therefore the actual production that uh, this year would have would be would be lesser in comparison to 2021 to 2022 so it's purely a mathematical reason for which the 2022's gdp is lesser second reason is that in 2021 people have uh, spent the money people have made investments but covid ka jo impact hai that was not there because covid's impact would there would be there in the economy in a in a long period of time okay it cannot come within 6 months it will be it will show it colors uh, in a long period of time okay so by 2022 to 2023 we will definitely see what kind of a recession does this covid brings in the world market and in india as well okay so on the basis of that also 2022 and 2023's economy uh, the gdp projections have been downgraded or we cannot say they are downgraded they are just lesser in comparison to 2021 okay in 2021 if you take the example of india it's 9% whereas in fy24 it is 6.1% we cannot say that it has been downgraded it is less in comparison to 2021 but the, this does not mean at any uh, cost or it at any case that the gdp is lesser in comparison to 2021 okay i have stated the reasons for which the gdp of this year is higher and the gdp of these years are lower okay so i hope that this much is clear to you now let's move on to the next question what is the validity of accreditation certification under sebi's framework on accredited uh, investors so here the right answer is option d one year so let me first give you the brief of this news then i will dwell into the details first of all you need to understand that cdsl Central Depository Services Limited has uh, received the approval from SEBI to set up an accredited agency. Okay, under the accredited uh, investors framework of SEBI that was launched last year in August twenty twenty one. Okay, so here in this question from the medium of this question, I am going to tell you what the framework was and what this news is. exactly so first i want to give you the introduction about an accredited investor what is an accredited investor <clears throat> so guys an accredited investors uh, investor is basically an investor which is considered prudent or qualified enough that he can make his investments prudently okay therefore uh, the uh, sebi or the market regulators of different countries be it the securities and exchange commission of us or the securities and exchange board of india or some other kind of uh, market regulation regulator in any other country these market regulators consider these individuals or these body corporates or the firms partnership firms or be it any kind of entity uh, they consider these individuals or these entities as prudent enough to make their investments prudently therefore the uh, market regulators relax give relaxation to these investors in terms of regulation okay 
so sebi says okay you are prudent enough you i uh, i uh, hope that you will make your investments prudently and you will not lead to any kind of market failure or failure in your own investments therefore i am losing some regulations regulatory requirements on you okay so uh, second benefit of the being a accredited investor is that these accredited investors also get relaxation from sebi in terms of minimum investment amount there are certain kind of uh, funds or for example aif alternative investment fund or there are portfolio management funds many things are there where there is a certain minimum investment amount needed by the investors to put into that investment uh, investment tool okay now for an accredited investor sebi says that since you are a worthy qualified investor okay i am letting you off uh, the hook for the minimum investment amount limit as well okay so that is the second benefit that these accredited investors get now now why are they getting these benefits because they are prudent enough and how is sebi measuring their prudence how is sebi measuring their qualification now particularly for sebi in india uh, uh, sebi measures the qualification of the investors of the accredited investors on the basis of their net worth and income so here the criteria is net worth and income in the securities market now the very important reason here is that why is sebi allowing uh, any accredited investor to invest in the unlisted security so that's the third benefit that these accredited investors get they can invest in unlisted securities as well and you should know this fact that unlisted securities ha have a greater risk because their disclosures are not maintained properly therefore there is a high risk in these kinds of securities so now now the question here is that why is sebi allowing these investors to invest in unlisted securities why is sebi allowing these investors to uh, follow a limited set of regulatory requirements and the sebi has also given flexibility to these investors in minimum investment amount also but why is it so because sebi wants to make investment consumer uh, investments investor friendly okay sebi wants to open the market to make it to investor friendly so that market can be boosted so this is a step on the part of sebi to boost the market okay to make it easy for the investors okay so that would be the precise reason for which sebi allows accredited investors to invest in unlisted security to uh, reduce the regulatory uh, compliances of these investors because regulatory compliances give an additional layer of complexity in investments that hamper the interest of the investors and if you know something about the msmes compliances then you should be aware of the fact that the center government is also doing the same thing in the registration or the various compliances that the msmes or other kinds of businesses have to go through now what is the reason behind doing so reducing compliances would definitely give a push to different kind of investors or the entities that want to show that want to open their business to do business okay this is an encouragement on the part of the government or the organizations like sebi so i hope that now what is an accredited investor and what is the need for uh, qualifying certain class of investors as accredited investor is clear to you next i think you are also aware of the fact that what is the eligibility criteria of sebi for qualifying these investors as the accredited investor that is the net worth and the income criteria now guys the things that i have explained to you have been put here in words for your later revisions as well okay so you can clearly read it on your own i have explained every word in the picture itself now this is the picture that shows you the eligibility criteria here you can see that the annual income um, okay in case of individuals hindu united families family trust and sole proprietors the annual income should be at least rupees 2 crores or the net worth should be at least rupees 7.5 crores okay so this list this picture entirely tells you the eligibility criteria which is purely uh 
for the learning purpose right so you need to learn it on your own i have provided you the details regarding the accredited investors and what the what does this mean so now let's go back to the news what the news was exactly so this cdsl ventures limited which is a wholly owned subsidiary of central deposit services limited has received the approval from sebi to establish an accreditation agency now do remember the accreditation certification is given by these agencies only to the in to the individuals to hindu united families to family trust to sole proprietors to partnership firms to etc etc okay so only accreditation agencies get this opportunity to give the certification and this agency will work for a period of 3 years with effect from february 1st 2022 now the md and ceo of cdsl is nehal vora and guys do not forget the validity of the certification that is for one year okay next question is quite a simple question which department of the center has launched mission amanat so it is indian railways now what is the purpose of this uh, this mission so mission amanat is basically to find the lost luggage of the passengers and the details of the lost luggage will be provided on this website now guys the Uh, the branch of the indian railways that has done a spectacular work in this mission is the western branch and if you want if you clearly see the url of this website here wr refers to the western railways so clearly this mission is however it is for the indian railways but the spectacular work or the major contribution was made by the western railways okay so i hope that you can remember this thing and the majority question the maximum question that can be made out of this news is in my opinion would be this only however they can reframe it according to them but that would be the maximum question that can be there in the examination in my perspective okay moving ahead with which country has india recently launched negoc negotiations on free trade agreement so it is guys uk so i hope that you are aware that with uae also india has started the free trade agreement uh, negotiations basically that is comprehensive economic partnership agreement on which the negotiations are going on with uae and the expectations are that these negotiations will end by june 2022 okay so probably um, by this year these uh, negotiations with uae will definitely be finalized and with uk the uh, free trade agreement negotiations have uh, been launched now guys this is you would be uh, glad to know this fact that uk is here cherishing this fact that uk has launched negotiations with india on free trade agreement because here the party which is seeking favor from this negotiation from this agreement is uk i hope that you are aware that by uh, 2030s uh, by 2031 or most probably by most maximally india would be the third largest economy by 2036 according to the world economic league table that was recently released so and that world economic league table was also released by a agency of uk itself so uk very well knows that by the year 2031 india is going to be the third largest economy of the world therefore uk needs to maintain good relations with india particularly in terms of trade therefore these negotiations have also been launched by uk itself so this is a really good thing because uk was the one which uh, colonized us okay now it's the golden opportunity for the uk government uh, to put british businesses at the front of the queue of the indian economy so that's all now the next fact here that is of importance for your examination is that uk secretary of state for international trade that is n mari has visited new delhi to meet the union commerce minister of ours piyush goyal for the 15th uk india joint economic and trade committee so this is an important fact guys do remember moving ahead which of the following organization has developed fetal light and ai powered fetal heart uh, rate monitor for mothers in labor so it is nxl recently the global women health tech awards have been uh, have been given by the world bank uh, in association with many organizations also so this organization in excel has got the award particularly for its 
fetal light initiative okay so let's deep dive into the news itself the awards are given by the world bank ifc international finance corporation which is itself a part of the world bank group and the consumer technology association now these awards were launched in august 2021 only and the name itself is clarifying the purpose that is to honor the companies that have created some kind of innovative solution for boosting the health of women okay health tech technology in the health sector that would cater to the needs of women and adolescent girls therefore the awards are categorized into three categories reproductive health and pregnancy general women's uh, women's and adolescent health and women safety and security now the winners so two organizations which are based in us and two organizations which are based in bangalore so here these two are indian organizations that have got the award so most probably i we can expect a question from these organizations but don't ignore these organizations as well and regarding this ua ue life sciences you need to know this fact that it also operates in india it has its offices in mumbai delhi and bangalore also okay so this i breast exam when this was launched by ue life sciences i had covered it in spotlight magazine because this is an important initiative for the detection of breast cancer okay so th this tool is used for the detection of early stage breast ca cancer then other one is this antiva biosciences which is not of uh, of much importance but at the same time do not uh, do not uh, ignore this organization bangalore based incel so it has been given the award for its fetal light initiative and niramai has also been awarded for its technological Uh, innovations for de uh, for detecting the breast cancer which sport is uh, tasneem meer related to so she is related to badminton now uh, she tasneem meer she has become the first indian to be ranked as the world number 1 badminton player badminton women single player but in the category of under 19 okay so do remember this fact she is the first indian in the under 19 junior badminton women single category to be ranked as the first uh, world number 1 okay uh, irrespective of the women single category it is the she is the first indian to be ranked uh, at the first position um, in the B B badminton world federation junior women's world ranking so do remember this thing and uh, she hails from gujarat so this is another fact related to her which can be asked in the examination as well now guys tasneem meets global ranking in the world uh, women single which includes adult as well as under 19 is 605 okay so this is an important ranking at the global stage she is ranked at 605 but in under 19 category she is the world number 1 which is historic in itself now uh, in the women singles adult category tai zu ying belonging to taiwan is the world number 1 in women single adult category victor excelson from uh, denmark is the number 1 in the men's adult category okay so guys so far we have discussed the questions that were very relevant from your exam point of view be it rbi seb nabard or any kind of other banking examination right now what i am going to discuss with you is the observations that i have derived from the world economic and situation prospects report so uh, now we are going to delve into the uh, observations of the report the report has itself given certain opinions certain observations have been made by the report and what are the implications of those uh, uh, those observations that i am going to discuss in this section further because let me first give you certain facts related to the importance of this report okay so that you can watch it uh, to till the end okay so this report has told about the asset purchase policy of the central banks okay this report has also dealt well uh, into the labor market situation at present okay this report has also uh, shed a light on the economic situation okay 
वन इकोनॉमिक सिचुएशन दैट इज ऑफ मच इंपॉर्टेंस वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड इन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ द डे दैट इज द जी डी पी फोरकास्ट एंड वाई द जी डी पी फोरकास्ट आर लोअर एंड हाई इन द ईयर्स दैट इज समथिंग दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड सो इन दिस सेक्शन आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द जी डी पी फोरकास्ट आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द इम्प्लीकेशन ऑफ द प्रेजेंट इकोनॉमिक सिचुएशन दैट दिस रिपोर्ट हैज हाईलाइटेड सो इफ देर इज अ क्वेश्चन इन योर फाइनेंस एंड मैनेजमेंट रिलेटेड टू द करंट एसेट बबल okay that is there in the market then you can cite this report very well from your understanding of the asset purchase policy and why is the asset price rising in the world okay if there is a question in your esi regarding the employment across the world as well as india then you can obviously cite this report and frame your answer on the on the basis of your understanding and also economic to we are going to discuss and you yourself assess what kind of uh, importance does this economic section would have for you okay so growth potential the very first subheading is the growth potential so global growth rate is slowing post 2021 that we have already discussed in 2021 consumer spending and investments led to an increase in the gdp growth rate the economies that are the export oriented economies that these economies have recovered fast because of the consumer spending because of the investments but the economies that are not so export oriented they have faced a rapid inflation and this is the case with india as well we are not export oriented company uh, country we are demand driven uh, country our own population demands a lot of the uh, lot of the production products that we produce and that uh, increases the gdp of ours okay so our economy is demand driven so this has led to a rapid inflation in india and similar is the case with many economies that are not export oriented economies okay uh, particularly in the latin american region and in the caribbean also moving ahead uh, in the economic potential only recovery has been especially low in the tourism dependent economies so this is a very basic uh, point now the impact of this is seen in the small island developing states where majority of the states majority of the nations are dependent on the tourism only for their survival and they are going to face a lot of um, a lot of turmoil because of the covid pandemic now according to the current forecast half of the world's economies will exceed the pre pandemic levels of output by at least 7% in 2023 however east asia south asia africa latin america and the caribbean regions may witness output growth levels below the levels level forecast prior to the pandemic okay so if you have seen my uh, video some days back when i discussed the global risk report there also this point was highlighted that the developing countries or the underdeveloped countries would see their economic growth potential downgraded by 5.9% and on the other hand the developed countries would see an increase in their economic potential and this will lead to a great economic uh, instability income gap between the developed and the developing world and this statement here is corroborated by this report again so guys uh, i hope that you can uh, memorize these two statements okay because you can clearly cite these statements and how uh, this economic uh, uh, economic instability or we can say economic inequality between the countries will lead uh, to instability across the borders as well will also stop the countries from collaborating to tackle the major challenges like climate change cyber attack terrorism terrorism etc so this is again stated here in this in this united nations report and this was the world economic forums report so two important reports are stating similar kind of situation that is going to come in the future moving ahead pandemic has uh, tapered the country's potential of growth that we have already seen these persistent output gaps will increase poverty and inequality and undermine sustainable development and the goal was to reach the sustainable development goals by 2030 but can we meet those goals so this is uh, guys now becoming a far fetched dream high income inequalities within and between countries may persist for a long period of time and this will definitely give a rise to the instability uh, across the regions 
Now the next subheading here is the labor market. What kind of a situation would be there in the labor markets? First of all, before dwelling into this uh, section, let me uh, give you a glimpse about the great resignation also. I hope that you all must have uh, read something on this great resignation. But even if you haven't, so let me inform you that this great re uh, resignation is basically a trend that is seen in US or developed countries where majority of the people have resigned from their jobs. In 2021, only 7.5 crore people have resigned from their jobs. Now, the reasons for the res resignation uh, are considered as the burnout from the work. They are basically churned out of the same work that they have been doing for years. Second reason is the lack of financial incentive or other incentives or the third reason is higher growth or potential that they see in other kinds of jobs or other sectors. For example, IT. Many people are, uh, are resigning from their job to join the IT sector or the other sectors that have a greater potential. So these are some of the reasons for the great resignation. But why am I telling you about this? Because this report states that the labor markets are not going to uh, see a recovery, uh, uh, particularly in the developing world and in the underdeveloped world uh, beyond 2023 to 2024. Okay, developed world would see a recovery in the labor markets in 2023 or in some cases by 2024. But the developing countries uh, will see this recovery in a very slow paced manner. Okay. So on the one hand, we have this phenomenon where the people who already possess a job, they are resigning from their jobs. On the other hand, this report tells us about this scenario where majority of the countries would not see a recovery in their labor markets. So this will again, if the developed economy, economies are going to repair their labor markets, again, the people will have jobs, they will have greater jobs and the income gap between the countries will widen. So this will escalate poverty in the developing and underdeveloped nations. So by 2022, 876 million people would be there under the poverty, okay, living under the poverty. However, this number has decreased slightly in comparison to the last year, but it is well above the pre-pandemic levels. Now guys, this is the most important part that I found and the most interesting part. So this report has seen that the men, that many central banks, central banks in the developed world have often, uh, have often sought recourse to the asset purchase programs for uh, reviving their economies. But this was the historic time when the, when the central banks of the developing countries have also launched the asset purchase programs to revive their economies. So what is this asset purchase program first of all so let me give you an example i hope that you are aware of the government securities acquisition program of the rbi that was launched particularly for purchasing the government securities to give liquidity to the market if the liquidity is there in the market people get the money then they will definitely spend the money and if this if they spend the money the producers will get the money they will further produce then this cycle will go on so that was the intention of pumping money into the market and one example of uh, pumping money through purchasing the assets is this government securities acquisition program of RBI. Okay, so this is the asset purchase program that many central banks of the developed world were doing and this was the first time or the historic time when the developing world has also started this asset purchasing program. Now by the second quarter of 2021, RBI was the only major developing country, country central bank that was doing significant asset purchases. Okay, now guys, here let me give you an advice you must have prepared a list of the steps that were taken by the central government for mitigating the impact of the covid pandemic but have you prepared a list of the steps taken by rbi to reduce the impact of the covid 19 on the monetary market or the financial market or economy of the uh, of india so if you haven't prepared the list, then do prepare a list because this is very important i i would say uh, the list of RBI and SIDBs, 
सिडबी एंड अदर फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन स्टेप्स टू रिड्यूस द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ द कोविड नाइनटीन इज ऑफ अ ग्रेटर इंपॉर्टेंस फॉर यू बिकॉज यू आर अ बैंकिंग एक्सपेरेंट एंड दे कैन वेरी वेल आस्क यू अबाउट द इनिशियटिव टेकन बाई दीज फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन टू इम्पैक्ट टू मिटिगेट द इम्पैक्ट ओके नाउ Regarding this only, I would like to ask a question from you, and that question is regarding the variable rate reverse repo auctions. So recently, RBI conducted these auctions again to uh, basically to ask for the money from the banks. Okay. So guys, here you need to tell me the exact implication of this variable re uh, uh, variable rate reverse repo auctions or initiative of RBI. I have explained it very well in the Spotlight magazine. Even uh, if even a layman could understand it. So if you have read it, then do mention the exact implication of the variable rate reverse repo initiative of RBI. Okay, what kind of impact will it have in the market? Now, guys. Since RBI is purchasing assets, and now I'm taking the example of RBI continuously, but do not understand that only RBI is doing so. It is happening at the global scale, at the world stage. Okay, so let's take the example of RBI only. Since RBI is pumping money into the market, the people have got the money. They have uh, spent the money on their needs. Now they are asking for the assets, like they are asking for the equity, they are asking for the bonds, they are asking for the real estate for investment. Now all of these things have led to an increase in the price of the asset, which has led to the asset price bubble. because the price of the asset has increased now this report has pointed out that if the central bank of india let's take the example of india if rbi changes its monetary policy for example if rbi starts to take more and more money from the people okay by selling its securities again through the open market operation or if rbi increases the policy rates which makes the loans expensive for the public then what will happen this Bus, uh, this bubble is likely to burst. So that's the that's the phenomenon that this report has pointed out. And uh, apart from this, if this bubble is bursted, then many bankruptcies would be there. And uh, let me give you an example here also. I hope that you have heard about the Evergrande company of China. Okay. So China's Evergrande company is a real estate company that has created many real estate uh, projects in China, which nobody is nobody wants to now purchase. Okay, so basically, if this huge company fails, then it will have a global spillover effect. Similarly, if the asset price asset price bubble burst in many economies, it is going to have a global spillover effect. And the example of the global spillover I have given you through Evergrande. If Evergrande fails, then many economies are going to have an impact, and the economies that are heavily dependent on China's economic assets, on China, the economies that have invested in China's market, they are definitely going to see a market. market failure so that would be the global spillover effect that the failure of this one company would have and the failure of many bankruptcies of many companies failure would have if the asset price bubble burst which is which according to experts is certain to burst but let's see when it uh, would burst and what kind of impact will it have on the market and on our nation Okay guys so here i would like to wind up this session thank you so much for watching the video if you have any suggestions regarding the video regarding the gk factory section you can uh, very well mention them in the comment section below and guys if you like the video then do not forget to subscribe the channel hit the bell notification like this video share it among your friends as well thank you so much for watching the video